So with dynamic parallelism, programs can use other parallel patterns as well, and that's where it gets really interesting. There's nested parallelism, where I can call a parallel function from inside my parallel program. That's taking a parallel program, creating other parallel programs. So if I have a sequence of kernels A, B, and C inside a CUDA stream, and kernel B wants to do its own sequence of steps, X, Y, and Z, I can just launch that work in line from B exactly where I need it. Without nested parallelism, I'd have to work X, Y, and Z into B's code and make a huge program or do some gymnastics with the CPU to launch the work, where, for example, I would split B in two, I would come out to X, Y, and Z, and I'd come back to the second half of B. That's all very complicated to write and very complicated to manage. It's much, much simpler if I can simply launch my work directly out of B. So here's an example. Suppose we want to adjust the volume of an audio stream. If we've got an incoming sound wave, this green wave right here, a lot of sound processing requires us to have a certain maximum volume which means constraining the wave to fit within these two dashed lines right here. We could write a parallel program to deal with this by creating a kernel to process this wave, which would then perform sequences of parallel operations to cause the rescaling of this waveform. So I'd feed this wave into a kernel, and the kernel would break it down into a series of blocks, like a normal CUDA kernel would do. The first step would be to find the maximum peak value in parallel, say 1.8 volts. So having found the maximum peak voltage, my kernel would then launch a second kernel, which would rescale everything by the 1.8 volts to end up with a normalized 1 volt peak-to-peak -peak audio. We're combining several bulk parallel algorithms into a single program operating on the whole wave at once.